Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the graduation mass. I just want to say a couple of words um, of briefly of housekeeping. If everybody could just turn their phones off to silent. Also, during mass, um, it is preferable to not take photographs at all. It's a St. Mary's Cathedral policy. But please make sure that your flashes are turned off. At the end of mass, and this is particularly for the graduands, if you could make your way at the end of the final hymn, um, down through the nave, as you come out of your pews and follow each other, um, and keep on going down, and there will be a photograph with His Grace, the Archbishop. You may spot him going back to the sacristy, but he will most definitely come back for a photograph with everybody. Thank you. I just would like to invite our Chancellor, the Honourable Christopher Ellis, to say a few words. Welcome everyone to the Notre Dame Graduation Mass at St. Mary's Cathedral. At the outset, I'd like to express our deep appreciation to His Grace, the Archbishop Anthony Fisher, for saying Mass and for the great support that he gives our university. I also wish to acknowledge the presence tonight of our Vice-Chancellor, uh, Professor Francis Campbell, and thank you, Francis, for everything you do for the university. Also, from the Board of Notre Dame, Hilary Craig Johnson and John Prendable, fellow directors, thank you for being here tonight and continuing to support the university in the way you do. This Mass, the central form of worship within the Catholic tradition, is the source and summit of our faith and we would like our graduates, their families and friends to share in this with us. People of all backgrounds and faith traditions are welcomed and included in the Notre Dame family. I hope that your participation in this Mass will symbolise the spirit of this inclusion. Although this is the season of Lent, this Mass is also th both thanksgiving and a celebration of our gradu graduates' great achievements. Our prayers go with you all for the exciting future which awaits you all. May God bless you all. Thank you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to St Mary's Cathedral for the celebration of our annual graduation mass for the University of Notre Dame, Australia. I acknowledge can celebrating with me Auxiliary Bishops of Sydney and Bishop of Sydney and Liaison for Tertiary Education, the Most Reverend Richard Umbers, Auxiliary Bishop of Sydney, the Most Reverend Terence Brady, Sydney Campus Chaplain, Father Reginald Chua, with Father Brian Lucas and Father Anthony Crook. I also welcome the Chancellor of the University, the Honourable Chris Ellison, the Vice Chancellor, the Professor. Francis Campbell, Pro Vice Chancellor, People and Culture, Jane Street, Chief of Staff and Principal Legal Counsel, Charbel Haddad, Associate Provost, Samantha Johnson, Chief Property and Facilities Officer, Stephen Dixon, Deans and Professors, Executive, Academic and General Staff, Distinguished Guests, Donors and Benefactors, Affiliates and Friends of the University, from the Church, academy, judiciary, health or business. Above all, I welcome our graduands, their family members and friends. To you all, a very warm welcome. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow both in merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Numbers. The Israelites left Mount Hor by the road to the Sea of Suf to skirt the land of Edom. On the way, the people lost patience. They spoke against God and against Moses. Why did you bring us out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For there is neither bread nor water here. We are sick of this unsatisfying food. At this, God sent fiery serpents among the people. Their bite brought death to many in Israel. 
the people came and said to Moses, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Intercede for us with the Lord to save us from these serpents. Moses interceded for the people and the Lord answered him, make a fiery serpent and put it on a standard. If anyone is bitten and looks at it, he shall live. So Moses fashioned a bronze serpent, which he put on a standard, and if anyone was bitten by a serpent, he looked at the bronze serpent and lived. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away. You will look for me and you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. The Jews said to one another, Will he kill himself? Is that what he means by saying, where I am going, you cannot come? Jesus went on, you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. 
I have told you already, you will die in your sins. Yes, if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus answered, What I have told you from the outset. About you I have much to say and much to condemn. But the one who sent me is truthful. And what I have learned from him, I declare to the world. They failed to understand that he was talking to them about the Father. So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself. What the Father has taught me is what I preach. He who sent me is with me and has not left me to myself, for I always do what pleases him. As he was saying this, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Old guys like me tend to ask younger people the same question. Not do you prefer the Marvel Universe or DC. Not what's your favourite team, fast food, dating app. Not what's your university, Netflix or Stan. Not even what's your religion, Apple or Android. Now the question we oldies regularly put is, what would you like to be when you grow up? It's a tamer version of the big question on all your minds tonight. What will I do with my life. Some view education just as a means to an end, the provision of educational services and their consumption to the benefit of the manufacturer and the customer, or as a step toward a career and a higher income or as preparation for being a more effective cog in the wheels of economy and society. Some of that helps explain why you've put yourselves through all you have these last few years, pandemic lockdowns and all, and why others would support you in doing so. Yet your UNDA years have hopefully been about more than this. For knowledge is a human good, good in itself, good for us, good for humanity, whether or not it can be readily turned to a profit. Sure, we want to be useful, but we want to be more than that. Who we want to be when we grow up is surely tied to the kind of beings we are. Rational, free, loving, 
with the potential to be heroes, to be saints. The second century Greek bishop of Lyon, France, Irenaeus, was a great leader, teacher, martyr, and saint. Long regarded as one of the church's greatest thinkers, Pope Francis recently conferred a doctorate on him, declaring him the 37th doctor of the church. The most quoted of Irenaeus's sayings is, the glory of God is the human being fully alive. Fullness of life in the end. What Christian life is all about. I came, said Jesus, that you might have life. Life to the full. One way to think of fullness of life is in terms of striving. To be fully alive is to strive to cultivate every dimension of our humanity. So we become more true and good and beautiful. To be our best selves, we must nourish our intellects. Knowledge, as I said, is good in itself. It feeds the mind and soul. It is good for us whether or not it has immediate application that's valued by employers, politicians, or the media. But of course, knowledge also has its uses. What you've learned at Notre Dame will bear fruit in some of you midwifing babies into this world. Others may educate the young of tomorrow as teachers. Some of you may put justice into the legal world. Others contemplate truth in the life of a philosopher, theologian, priest, even doctor of the church. Some may even hold up the winged caduceus or rod of the schlepius or brazen serpent of Moses, as in our first reading, the symbol of medicine, sharing the gift of healing as doctors, nurses, or physios. However these fruits may manifest themselves, what is clear is that they are for sharing with others. No one lights a lamp just to hide it under a bucket, said Jesus. For the academic achievements we celebrate tonight and tomorrow, of which you are all so justly proud, are not yours only. The thinking upon which you drew is the accumulated research and thought of many others down through the centuries. Others established your excellent university and its many facilities, or provided your Commonwealth supported place or student loan, or actually taught you or supported you through your degree. However much came from within you, much also came from outsiders. Even when you felt most alone, typing your assignments on your computer late at night, or during Zoom lessons when you were the only one in your flat, or during exams when everything seemed to depend on you, even then, there was an entire academic community around you, and behind it, a society, a church, and a tradition that values such things and enabled your education to happen.
Some of you may be wondering how you got through it all. Doubtless, you worked hard. Doubtless, others helped in all sorts of ways, such as some I've mentioned. But thankfully, you had another community of support backing you and the university. A great communion of saints, which our university calls upon as heavenly tutors for its students. There's been St Albert the Great, patron saint of science, who's remembered above all because he had such a clever student in Thomas Aquinas. Albert was helping you discover your own genius. St Thomas himself, most brilliant of all doctors of the church, was praying for your mind to understand and your memory to be retentive. St Francis de Sales, patron saint of writers, was there to get you through your writer's block and help you find the right phrase. St Expeditus, patron of procrastinators, was beside you when you had a thousand excuses to neglect your studies. St Ursula, Mary MacKillop, Ignatius and so many others who devoted themselves and their orders to the education of the young were concerned to see you got the best education. St Joseph Cupertino, who was a rather mediocre student himself, was there calming your nerves and telling you that you'd be fine and that, that there are things that matter more than academic assessment anyway. All those times the Zoom link wouldn't work or the computer had frozen and you feared you'd lost all your work. There was St Isidore of Seville, patron of technology, doing his best to intervene. And when it all seemed too much, there were St Jude and St Philomena, patron saints of lost causes, picking you up, dusting off the dust, and getting you ready to start again. There were lots of others for so many have gone before us who care deeply about you. And because the church is an extended family that cares about your welfare in this life and your eternal happiness in the next. And if all these tutors weren't enough, watching over you through it all was Our Lady, Notre Dame, the seat of wisdom and mother of God, who with the greatest tenderness was imploring wisdom for you from her divine son. What all these saints wanted for you is what this university wants for you. What Irenaeus explained God wants for you. The human being fully alive. There was a second half, in fact, to what Irenaeus said, and that's too often ignored. The glory of God is the human being fully alive, he said, and the glory of the human person is the vision of God. Dear graduands, Graduation is a time to celebrate your hard work and achievements. A time to be grateful to those who helped to get you there. And a time to consider how best to apply all you've learnt in the future. It's a time also to ask where God fits into your plans, or better, where you fit into God's plans. By God's grace, you were given a mind and heart, imagination and memory, 
a body and a stretch of life, talents to do good and freedom to choose it. Some here tonight are believers, some non-believers, and many still searching. But we all care deeply for our world and each other. We want to do our bit to make our communities more just, compassionate and peaceful. We want to be beacons of hope, idealism and care. We want to demonstrate that love that Jesus demonstrated when, like Moses and the Schlepius' serpent, he was raised up on the tree of salvation. Success for us will not be measured just in salaries achieved or wealth accumulated, or gadgets or experiences. Now, as we grow up, we seek a happiness that comes from commitment to some higher things and a willingness to give ourselves to them. We seek dare I say, to be human beings fully alive and enjoying the vision of God. As the solemnity of Easter approaches, dear friends, let us pray to the Lord to be all the more insistent that all of us and the whole multitude of the baptised, together with the entire world, may come to share more abundantly in this sacred mystery. For the Church, especially for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop, bishops, priests, and all those who minister to God's people, that they may remain faithful to God's love and will every day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders in our country and across the world, that they may make wise and prudent decisions, seeking always to promote justice, charity, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our university, that we proudly bear Our Lady's name, Notre Dame, and be inspired by her example. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our graduates, that God may watch over them, guide them in their decisions. Be with them in times of struggle and success. Inspire their thoughts and direct them into the way of his love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young people, that their search for knowledge and truth through study and prayer and work will help all people discover the truth and peace of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us here present, that made in the image and likeness of God, we may respect and defend the supreme dignity of every human life, from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Let's ask Our Lady Notre Dame to join us as we pray for each other in thanksgiving for the gift of the friendship and the collegiality we've experienced at Notre Dame as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Have mercy, O Lord, on the prayers of your church, and turn with compassion to the hearts that bow before you, that those you make sharers in the divine mystery may never be left without your assistance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, and our good and good of all his holy church. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offences and direct our wavering hearts, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed, and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, Terry, Richard, and Danny, my assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise. They offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, in paying the homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sextus, Cornelius, and Cyprian, Lawrence, and Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment light and your holy apostles and martyrs with john the baptist stephen matthias barnabas ignatius alexander marcellinus peter felicity perpetua agatha lucy agnes cecilia anastasia and all your saints admit us we beseech you into their company not weighing our merits but granting us your pardon through christ our lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We now present a graduation cross to each of our graduates. This representation of the cross on which Jesus died is central to the Christian faith. It is a sign of Christ's saving death made once and for all on the wood of the cross for our salvation. The cross is a symbol of the University of Notre Dame, Australia. It is a prominent feature of our university and is displayed on the walls of all rooms on all Notre Dame's campuses across this country. We hope that you will treasure this cross made from beautiful Western Australian Jarrah wood. We hope you will fix it to a wall in your home or place of work. We hope that this cross, along with the testimony you will receive at the formal graduation ceremony, will be a constant reminder of your time at Notre Dame and that like Jesus, you too are called to transform the communities in which you live and work. Each of you will be given a cross central to the Christian faith and Notre Dame. We now request that our Archbishop bless the crosses we give to you. Lord our God, you sent your beloved Son Jesus into the world to save us from sin and to give us the bright hope of eternal life. By the power of the, his death on the cross, free us from sin and let us live each day for you and for each other. Bless this sign of glory and let it remind us that Jesus died and rose for all peoples. Fill us with your grace and strength so that we may be able to carry our own crosses with him every day and thus follow the example of Jesus in serving others through Christ our Lord. Amen.
dear friends from the University of Notre Dame, Australia, and especially dear graduates, congratulations on achieving this milestone in your lives. When you graduate tomorrow or very soon, that will be one chapter of your lives completed and a new chapter beginning. You're more or less grown up now. What you're going to do with that life will be up to you and God. But I have great confidence looking at the very fine people we have before us graduating that you'll do great things, great things with what you've gained at Notre Dame. Please know that the church is always here for you. The church have gone before us, those that were praying for you all the way through your degree and those that will be praying for you all through your lives to come. Please know that you are made for great things and will do great things if you cooperate with God and use those talents you have wisely. Beside me, my two deacons tonight were amongst you as graduates. Uh, they too are graduating in philosophy, I think. Uh, so some of you could end up priests or even maybe archbishop one day. The rest of you, I'm sure, will have other great things to do for our world. Thanks be to God for each one of you. Thanks be to God for the University of Notre Dame, Australia. God bless you all. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. O God, who chose to show mercy, not anger, to those who hope in you, grant that your faithful may weep as they should for the evil they have done, and so merit the grace of your consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the mass is ended. And thanks be to God.